as we begin on this Sunday morning, the day after Christmas, we just want to thank each and every one for coming out to One Accord Church this morning. And for those of you that are viewing us live, we thank you. And also on our website is oneaccordchurch.net. We invite you to go to our website, catch all our services streaming, and also leave your prayer request needs or messages. Be more than glad to get back up with you. And also those of you that are on our television programs, we just want to thank you for tuning into our service this morning. And um, we pray and hope everybody had a Merry Christmas. We pray you put Christ where he belonged in charge of it. Amen. Amen. And we want to extend a warm welcome if you're out there and you don't have a church home and, and you're looking for a church that simply believes in the Word of God, we'd love for you to come join us because that's what we stand on, the Word of God. You know, it, it's ironic um, nowadays, you, you got so many different names. We're trying to give so many churches, but then when we, uh, I saw a study where they said that um, things that the people, the churches is moving away from di different things, um, and and it's kind of ironic because what we should all be is about the Bible, the Word of God. I mean, don't don't. Uh, someone says, "Are you a free gospel?" <laughs> You know, I said, well, isn't the gospel free? You know, I'm a sarcastic person anyway, you know. And, I, and then they say, are you non-denominational? I mean, they keep going down the list. I said, let me help you out. We believe in the Bible. That's it. That's what we put our faith and trust in completely. Now, with that being said this morning, uh, this message is still, it's Christmas. I think... The birth of Christ should be celebrated all year round. It's amazing. I actually saw somebody in Joan, and she says, to be sure they're not doing this, but we saw somebody with the tree on back on, on top of their SUV carrying it off. She says, really? I said, well, they're ready for it to get over with. But listen, if we celebrate for the right reasons, we don't want it never to end. And um, I'm just, I'm going to go into a couple of verses of Scripture because I got some good news for everybody. Anybody need any good news? Well, there were some folks that got the good news, and it was, this was the good news for the shepherds, but also good news for sinners. Anybody been a sinner? Well, guess what? These shepherds, we're going to compare these shepherds to us nowadays, the world. You know, um, I'm going to be going in the book of Luke. And you can turn there, if you will, as it's going to be in Luke chapter 2, verse 10. But as you turn there, the angel of the Lord, he, he was announcing to the shepherds at this particular time in this scripture about the birth in Bethlehem, about the birth of Christ. You know, I mean, up until this very moment, can't even imagine how long a wait they had. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, people waited and waited and waited. And you say, what? Well, that ain't a lot of years, but that's a lot of generations that have passed on. 400 plus years. But finally, here it is. The hour has arrived. And now the, the, the message comes. The angels send a message. And that's what we, when we do our Christmas messages, it's about the taxing, how it brought Joseph and Mary where they needed to be. The journey they had to take to Bethlehem. And the birth in the stable. Yes, it was in a stable. And it wasn't in a hospital. Yes, it was in a place where it smelled like cattle and sheep. And it was a stable. There was no doctors. Nowhere for baby Jesus Christ. But if we look in Luke, a doctor chose to tell the story. Luke is known as the great physician. As a physician. So let's listen to what Luke said in chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. And the angel said unto them, talking to the shepherds, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Let's just take them two verses of Scripture and let's just really look at them. These, shepherd, these angels came announcing this news to the shepherds. The first to know were humble shepherds. The Lord, the announcement, God said, okay, go to these shepherds. 
He didn't go to the king's palace. He didn't go to all these other people that thought they were all that and then some. He went to the lowly shepherds. The people that nobody thought twice about, right? They were the first to know about this. And also, isn't it how fitting that whenever they went to the shepherds, take note, it says that they called him the Lamb of God. Somebody do the math. Shepherds, what did shepherds take care of? Lambs. He was called the Lamb of God. And not only the Lamb of God, then the angel went to the shepherds to announce the birth of Jesus. So what is the good news that I just said that we need to really focus on this morning? Well, the first thing we need to understand, he said it in, in Luke 2. He said, fear not. The end of fear. We celebrate in Christmas because of the birth of Christ. The birth of Christ is the end of fear. Let me say this to you. It's important for us to understand. The end of fear. <laughs> Thank you. How much bad news have we gotten over Christmas? Sickness? Illness? I mean, even look at, look at our church where people are in the hospitals right now. People, there's so much going on that Satan is trying to plant fear. But when we allow fear to get in, what's happening? We're missing the whole point of what was born. What did the angel say? Fear not. Okay, who brought fear into the world? Listen, these words, these two very simple words, are always in the vocabulary of the angels throughout the biblical part. If you'll listen to the angels, the first thing the angels always kept saying, fear not. Fear not. Because Satan brought fear. Luke tells us that these shepherds were afraid. They were afraid, but their fear that the angel said, fear not, runs a whole lot deeper than just that night with the shepherds. Now, who sent the angels? God. And he sent them there, and the first thing he looks at them and says, fear not. Now, I want you to know something that these angels were afraid. I mean, excuse me, the shepherds were afraid, but they didn't get this demon by themselves. In fact, if we really want to break down, I want you to get your Bibles and turn to Genesis for me. Because we need to understand fear is of the enemy. Fear does not belong to you. Yeah, but preacher, you don't know what we're going through. Yes, but if the angel was to come to you, the first thing he would say would be what? Fear not. Look at Genesis chapter 3, beginning in verse 8, just a few verses. This is the first evidence of the fall because Satan, the devil, he planted something in Adam and Eve. The first, this was the first signs of fear. And this is important for us to understand. In Genesis 3, 8, And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God almost amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called in Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Well, we know all the rest of the story, but there's the day fear walked in to mankind. Satan planted the fear when they disobeyed God. When they disobeyed God, Satan had an open door to put one of his demons to work. What was that demon? Fear. Then they were afraid of God. They were afraid of someone that created them and loved them and cared about them and, and had fellowship with them. They didn't have no fear of God until they walked out of the will of God. Yeah. And because of doing so, fear fell upon the whole world. 
fear. In fact, this demon of fear to this very day is still stalking men and women throughout life, centuries since. But while you're still in Genesis, I want you to take note of a few people that operated in fear, even when God had called them to do what he asked them to do. They still allowed that demon of fear to come in. Listen, Satan don't care who you are, what title you've got, or what you're doing for him. Satan will definitely try to plant his demon of fear in. In fact, you take Abraham. Look what fear done to this man. Go, stay in Genesis and go to Genesis 12. Let's fast forward up a little bit. We want to talk about the good news. The shepherd says, fear not. I want to drive this point home because when we walk in fear, there's no way we can walk in faith. Listen, somebody, you can't walk in both of them. Amen. You got to pick which way you're going to travel, right? All right, well, look what fear done. Check this out. And it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt. Who was he? Abraham. And he said unto Sarah, his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Therefore, it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, this is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee because you look good. Now look what Abram said. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that I may be well, that it may be well with me for thy sake. For my soul shall live because of thee. Fear made the man scared. Fear had him so terrified because he had a good looking wife that somebody else would want her. Satan don't care how he gets in it. Do you know that's how jealousy came into this world? Fear. People to this day are ravished in this fear. So Abraham lied about his wife because he was scared of what somebody might do. I'd be going, yeah, look at, she's mine. Yeah, but here's what blows my mind before we go any further. Listen, who sent Abraham to do this? What did God say to the man? I got this. I've taken care of you. Your enemies won't be able to touch you. You just do like I said. What does he do? He goes out and looks at his wife and says, uh-oh, we got a problem. Lord, you didn't realize that I got a good-looking wife, and they're going to kill me just because she's good-looking. People don't get this. Abram lost sight and fear stepped in when he stepped out of the will of God. If he'd have just kept his mouth shut and went and done what God called him to do, they won't nobody going to touch his wife because she's covered. Fear don't step in until we step out of our faith, believing and trusting in what God says. So Abraham lied because of fear. But there's another fellow. Stay in Genesis. Now fast forward to chapter 32. Go to Genesis 32. Few verses of scripture here. There's another fellow that spent his entire life in fear. You know, there are people that live in fear to this day. Who is behind fear? I keep saying that to you because throughout the Bible, God had a one of his biggest problems with people he called was what? Fear. Yeah. I would, but I'm afraid. Yeah. Well, I, I'm going here. I would do this, but I'm afraid I might not be good at it. Yeah. Wrong. If God's called you to do something, do it. He'll make a way. Amen. Quit walking in fear. If God's called you to preach, teach, or sing, do it. Amen. He'll make a way. Quit looking at the problem. Look at, look at Genesis 32, verse, verse 6, if you will. Look, this is Jacob. He was afraid of his brother Esau. Now take note what he said. And the messenger returned to Jacob, saying, We came to thy brother Esau, and also he cometh to meet thee, and 
400 men with him. And fan of a celebration, all of a sudden, what was he thinking? Yeah. Doom. Yeah. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. Well, one demon behind the other. Fear got in, started stressing out. Anybody seen people stress out at Christmas? Yeah. Their deal's gone. Their, their package ain't coming on time. People start stressing out, right? And he divided the people that was with him and the flocks and the herds and the camels into two bands and said, if Esau come to the one company and smite it, then the other company which is left shall escape. The sad part about it, he put one of his, his women. He separated his, his loved ones. He had one he liked better than others. I'm going to put you up front. Fear. Fear set in. And Jacob was so afraid of Esau. What happened when he met him? It was a party. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Esau, he, he wrestled. I mean, Jacob wrestled with an angel. Yeah. Why? Because he was afraid. Yeah. He didn't want to go do what they told him to do. Let me tell you something. The demon of fear is real. This demon was so powerful that he was willing to fight an angel not to carry out God's purpose. Somebody think about this a minute. Fear. Fear is destroying people to this very moment. Listen, one more verse of scripture right quick. Exodus 4.1. Go there for me. Now, this is about our friend Moses. Did you know Moses had a problem with the demon of fear? Yeah, I know it's hard to get into this Christmas message when we're talking about fear, but the, the shepherds, I mean, the angels shared good news to the shepherd. Fear not. And he's telling the whole world, fear not. In Exodus 4.1, look what he said. And Moses answered and said, he was talking to God, but behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, the Lord hath not appeared unto me. He was afraid he was afraid to do what Almighty God said he had taken care of. He was afraid. He wanted, in fact, he was so afraid that a Pharaoh, and he was terrified, and he wanted to send somebody else. Fear. Fear. The angels, the reason they start off with fear not, is because they know they're casting out the only demon that's getting in their way. They're casting him out. You need to get rid of fear, church. If you're waiting for 2022 to get any better by any system, you can forget it. The only thing that's going to get better is you and your faith. Amen. Get our faith in action and get rid of fear. The children of Israel, look, they, they, God had to literally drag them to the promised land. In fact, every time something come up, they got afraid and started going against Moses and all the crowd, and they wanted to return to Egypt. Yeah. They were afraid of their circumstances. God's going, what have I got to do yeah. to get your attention? Yeah. I parted the sea. Yeah. I've done everything I told you I'm going to do. I fed you when you couldn't feed yourselves. And then all of a sudden they face some obstacles and the first thing they want to do, fear. The demon of fear got in and says, you're doomed. From the Old Testament, we see over and over and over again about how fear, and I need to say this, everybody says fear, you need to claim it. It's, it's not fear, it's a demonic force against your faith. Fear is not an emotion Fear is demonic. Fear is Satan getting in those cracks of your faith and causing you problems. We need to understand that we need to get rid of that fear. Jesus would move through the area. He traveled dispelling fear. Now we moved out of the Old Testament. Everybody's filled full of fear. And he's telling everybody over and over again, I called you to do something. Don't fear what the world can do to you. Church, church. Listen, in general, Christians, body and believers in Christ, when are we going to step out of our fear and step into our faith? 
When are we going to realize that Satan is winning the battle? He says, the Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Right? If God is in it, God will take care of it. We got, if we're not careful, we are, Satan is going to send a hand and scare us, slam out of church. We got to get, oh, well, if he's going to preach about me not coming to church, listen, it's not about coming to church. Amen. It's about your commitment of your faith, believing God's going to take care of you. Amen. We're afraid to death to get out and walk into a church, but we'll go into a shopping center with a bunch of crazy people. And we'll fight over a basket full of stuff like there's, like there's gold at the bottom of that thing. We'll sit there and argue with people. And, and, and I watch them in lines and, and I laugh. They get in line and they'll get mad. I wish they had more tellers in here. And, I, and some of them get so mad they just throw the stuff right down and walk out. I'm going, now what did you accomplish? People are walking around so messed up and so tore up and we're living in fear. I watch people go down the road and I'm not dispelling that there's illnesses and sicknesses and diseases. Newsflash, we've had them from the beginning of time. Amen. So it's not a new, it shouldn't be a surprise to us. But I am so shocked that people, listen, God takes care of all our needs if we will remove the demon of fear out of them. Look, did you, what did Jesus do whenever the disciples was in the storm? He calmed it. He said, sit down, chill out. I got this. We're in a storm. Listen, good news from, from the angels to the shepherds. Fear not. God still got it. Blind Bartimaeus feared he would never see. But what did God do? Don't fear, faith it. Yeah. Get your eyes off your problem. Well, I probably won't never be able to see again. Well, don't want to hear that neither. Lord says, I am God. Amen. And he healed him. Hey, look, how about the 10 lepers that they feared that they would never be with their families anymore? Satan planted fear. Look, you're sick. All 10 of you are sick. You're not going to be able to go see your family no more. You're not going to be able to go see your children no more. You're going to be left out here. You're going to die. They had fear. Jesus said, have faith. What did Jesus do to the ten lepers? He healed them. Yeah. Sent them home. Yeah. Healed. Over and over and over in the Bible. How about Mary and Martha? They feared what? That Lazarus was dead and, yeah. and, and that they didn't want him to die. Jesus didn't cry and get upset over his death. He was upset over the lack of faith yeah. in his people. What did he do to Lazarus? He raised them. Yeah. I bet you they look kind of silly, don't you? Going to Jesus all mad and blowed up and yeah. feared. Like, well, if you just done what... Come on, church. When are we going to get out of the... The, the visual of what's going on in this world. Look at the fear that has ravished this country at Christmas. Fear, health. A lot of people are sick. A lot of people are going through a whole lot. Very, this very moment as we speak, people are suffering and sick in need. Not to diminish the fact that we are, people are suffering in need. But what we got to do is we got to put more faith in it than fear. We got to understand. People are afraid. People are, are, are concerned. Yet, listen, it's okay to have compassion. It's okay to, to, to feel the hurts of those in need. It's, it's, it's okay. But what should stand stronger than anything with your health is your faith. We got to, well, we, we don't preach that no more. Well, you need to. People need to get faith back in the church. Maybe the church will get back to doing God's work. Amen. People fear in families. I don't think there's one person in here with a perfect family. Don't we have fear over our loved ones? But guess what? That's okay. I refuse to walk by fear in the circumstance. God's got it. 
Look, you can handcuff them to the bedpost and keep them there. They still going to mess up. You, you're not in control. People say, well, I'm going I'm to keep them right where I need them. But when they grow up, they have to step out. You can't walk by fear. God created it. God will take care of it, right? We should understand this about this fear demon. He needs to go. Look at the world conditions. They're kind of messed up. They ain't getting no better. You know why they're not going to get no better? It's because our system has run out of fear rather than faith. People are more concerned about what people are going to say, think, and do rather than have faith in Almighty God. People are afraid. People are walking in fear. People are walking in fear of life. Listen, I learned one thing a long time ago. Listen to this. The only day you can start living when you're not afraid of dying. I thank God for every day. You know why I'm not afraid to die? I took demon out of it and put God in it. What do you mean, Pastor Greg? Well, faith is in the Word of God. The will of God is God's Word. So my faith is in the Word of God. And, and, and my faith in the Word of God says that whenever I take absent from this world is present with the Lord. There's my faith. Y'all think I'm going to go sit somewhere and rot? Wrong. Let me tell you what the Bible said. Greg Nethercutt is going to be absent from the world and immediately present with the Lord. And house payment, forget it. Because my Savior Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, is up there building me a mansion. Preferably a log cabin in the woods would work for me, but whatever he decides to build, he's already got it. See, listen. We're, we're not going to never start walking by faith until we get that demon of fear out of our circumstances and our life. Faith is the opposite of fear. You are saved by faith and kept by faith. You are saved by faith. Faith in what? The word. Why has it got to be the word? Because the word is what you got saved by. So you, your faith is kept by your faith in the word. Listen, I, I, I'm a broken record and apparently I'm going to have to be. Everybody, when they come to you, they're walking in fear. Satan is trying to destroy the faith. Listen, one nation under God. One nation under God. This nation was founded on the principles of the Bible. I don't care what everybody, you give yourself a name, you give yourself a title. Let me tell you something. This nation was founded on the principles of the Bible. It's our fault that it's not there no more. The news of the shepherds to the, to, from the angels to the shepherd, good news. I got good news. He said, fear not. But he said something else. Good tidings of great joy. The birth of joy. That's Jesus. The birth of joy. Anybody got joy? Anybody got teeth? Show some joy. Well, I got to go home and I, I got to put all this stuff up and I, I, I got to clean up this mess. I ain't going to do it no more this year. I'm so sick of turkey. Everybody goes home and they find reasons to flip. Where is your joy? Amen. Good. Look, the angel says, fear not, shepherds. He's saying, fear not, church. Fear not, I bring you tidings of great joy. In fact, look at all the Christmas songs. Joy to the world. Yeah. Joy, joy, joy. Where is the joy? Amen. Well, Christmas is over with. No, uh-uh. Christ is never over. Christ was born, and that's why we should have every day of joy. Christ is not gone nowhere. We're not going to put him in a box and put him in a closet. Christ is here, he, and, and, and he's here, and we should have joy every day. This is why joy is so important. Why? Because our Savior is born. Why say Savior? Somebody that saved you from yourself. And Satan, because you're the one that lets him in. 
Jesus came to save us from ourselves. Praise the glory to God. Because Greg never could, could have never got himself out of where he was at. I tried. For 30 some years I thought, anybody hard headed? I got this. I, I messed it up. I'll fix it up. You know, I learned that's about the dumbest thing any human being has ever said. I messed it up. I'll fix it up. Well, if you could have fixed it up, you'd have never messed it up. But good news, that's what was born, my Redeemer. That's what was born, my Savior. Look, and good news, church, the birth of Christ done something that we don't even realize. Listen closely. It fulfilled the scriptures. When Christ was born, everything here became life. Because of the birth of Jesus, the scriptures was fulfilled. It's sad that the people didn't believe it. It's sad for us that have never seen him that we believe it more than those that saw it. The generations of different people. Because Christ is Lord. Praise the Lord. That's what I, we have should joy. Listen, if y'all are all worried about who's going to be elected or dejected or whatever they're going to get, you got your eyes on the wrong thing. Amen. My God is still on the throne. Amen. Jesus still sits at the right hand of Father God. Right. Jesus still intercedes for you and I. He's still the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He don't have a four-year term. He's got an eternal term. And that's who we need to put our faith and trust in. Christmas is all about what came here that we should be receiving. Christ is going to be Lord no matter whether you receive him or not. We need to get joy back in it, church. Joy. I can see us right now. What's going to happen if we don't get some joy? What's going to happen to the church? Come on, guys, look around. What's going to happen? Are we going to downsize till we're outside? What are we going to do if we don't get the joy? I, everybody I see, Merry Christmas. I've been grabbing some wit. I said, where is your joy? Amen. I don't got none. Well, good. Let me introduce you to why we celebrate Christmas. Yeah. Joy came to this earth. Yes. Joy in the form of a little bitty baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the man. His name is Jesus. Now, if you want joy, you got to meet Jesus because yeah. Jesus gives you joy. Right? Yeah. And the wonderful thing about good news that no fear. He, he says, fear not. But he says, I bring you good tidings of great joy. He also said, which shall be to all people. To all people means something very great. This is the beginning of evangelism. Yeah. This is what took place right then and there. Evangelism. The shepherds were told to go to tell all people. He said, which shall be to all people. The angel said to the shepherds, to all people. The shepherd says, we're nobody. He said, that's why we came to you. Now you go tell everybody about what took place. Somebody needs to grasp this this morning. All of us need the Savior. Amen. And the angel said to shepherds, to all people, to all people, that's to every single human being. I don't care what you call yourself. I don't care how messed up you are. I don't care how a train wreck you are. I don't care how bad things have gotten. Listen, he came for all of us. I've learned something that, you know, everybody, we got all these groups that give themselves names. Let me tell you, there's two names that's really important. Lost. And found. See, everybody that took sin and we want, to, we want to give it a new name, you're either lost 
or you know Jesus. See, yeah, but we're of so-and-so group. Let me try because you're hard-headed. You either know Jesus or you don't. Amen. Well, we, I don't care about what we do. We ain't in it. You either know Jesus or you don't. Okay, either God's your father or Satan is. Call it what you want it. The Bible says it clear. So what am I saying? Listen closely, whole world. Last message you'll get in 2021. Romans 3, 23. I'm going to keep this so simple. A child can understand it. Listen, we have complicated everything in God's word, but this is going to be broke down simple. Listen closely about the good news of evangelism. Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So whether you call yourself the ABCs or the LBGs or whoever you want to call yourself, you're all lost. Amen. We're all sinners. Amen. Good news. Christmas. Romans 5, 8. Romans 5, 8. This is the good news for everybody because the shepherds heard this come out of the angel's mouth to all people. We're going to break down stupidity. We're going to break down generational curses. We want to break down everything that you've put in the way of salvation. Listen to Romans 5, 8. But God commendeth his love toward who? Us. In that while we were what? Yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christmas is all about the birth of Christ. Christ is all about God loving us so much that he sent his only son to die on the cross for our sins. Good news. Get rid of your titles. Get rid of the names. Meet Jesus. He don't care what you call yourself. He don't care what you put on your church building or your building. He don't even care if you're worshiping Satan right now. Jesus is telling you that he came here for every one of us. Yes, All you got to do is accept him. Amen. Well, Pastor Greg, you don't understand. I've spent my whole life living this way. That's okay. Good news. Are you still breathing? Can you suck in oxygen? Good news. Call on the name of Jesus. He says, in no wise will he cast you out. John 3 says, he loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed him is not going to what? Perish. Good news. Quit listening to the media that's trying to tell you who you are. Quit listening to the government just trying to give you a name. Go back to Jesus, the name above all names. And claim Jesus Christ. Then you will go from one category to the other. I have to be honest and I have to be real. One category is lost. The other one is found. The one is Father Satan or Father God. The one is hell or the one is heaven. I don't know how much simpler we need to put it out there. But listen. Don't shoot the messenger. Listen to what the angel said to the shepherd. Fear not. I bring good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Christmas is everything that we need to thank God for. Christmas is, represents, we're going to see our loved ones in heaven. Christmas is the birth of healing. Yeah. Oh, he's going to say that again. If you don't believe it, you don't receive it. Well, pastor, I believe I'm saved, but I don't believe there's no healing. Well, you can't have one without the other. Jesus didn't separate himself. What came to this earth, the reason we celebrate Christmas is the birth of healing, the birth of deliverance, the birth of restoration. Everything that Jesus came here to do when he came to this earth, when, when Mary delivered the child of God, when she laid him in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes, when that little baby came here, 
That was the birth of everything that we needed to be victorious over every single enemy in this world. Christmas, we should shout for joy. Amen. Christmas, I know we, we're not that denomination. We don't shout. We take naps. I, I don't care what you call yourself. And Jesus don't care what you call yourself. It's time for us to get off playing church and realize why Jesus came to set us. Jesus came to set us free from the law, from religion. He came to set us free from all the mess that we build up over what God intended it to be. Whatever reasons we're not doing what God's called us to do is no excuse. The truth of the matter of it is, is you want God to move in you, you got to let God in. There you go. Christmas is a celebration. I know y'all ain't happy like me. <laughs> but I'm happy. Amen. You know why I'm happy? I'm going to heaven. Yes, Do you know why I'm happy? Every demon that kept oppressing me and beating me down and trying to destroy me, I found out that God took care of it. I found out that I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Yes. I'll say this to you again. I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. So through Christ which strengthens me, he gives us power and authority to cast out demons, to lay hands on the sick. He has given us that authority through Christ Jesus. He can't lie because he's the father of the truth. Satan is a liar from the beginning. That's why he's been deceiving the world. Good news is, Jesus set us free. Amen. You are free. Amen. Well, I don't feel it. Well, get over what you feel. Close your flesh. Open your spiritual faith up and receive what he wants you to have. The birth of Christ is what? Birth in us. There are people, and this is where I want to say this to you. We got loved ones that are in bad shape. Sick. Yeah. Well, I feel so sorry for him. Well, if you really felt sorry for him, why don't we intercede for him? Yeah. Come on, church. Yeah. Christmas is the birth of hope. Yeah. Yeah. I might be the dumbest preacher on earth, but I just simply believe the Bible. As far-fetched as we say in the country as it might seem, I just believe what he said. I believe that God will heal right now. Amen. I believe what Jesus said. I believe that every demon from hell has to flee at the name of Jesus. Amen. And I believe with all my power that if the Lord can put an ear back on a man that's been severed, I'm pretty sure he can raise some people out of their hospital beds. I'm pretty sure he can heal a cold. I'm pretty sure he can fix a cracked rib. I'm pretty sure he can fix the skin up. I'm pretty sure that even though cancer is rated number one, I still believe that Father God is bigger than any disease. I believe it. If you don't believe it, let me ask you a dumb question. Why are you here? Well, my body don't feel like it. I didn't ask your body nothing. Amen. I asked, greater is he that is in than is in your problem. I'm speaking to you spiritually. Spiritually, it's not some crazy method of religion. Amen. Spiritual is who God is. Yes, we are in a battle, flesh versus spirit. It's time we put the flesh where it belongs. Yes, it's time we prayed in the spirit. You want God to move? Put God where he belongs. Church, as I open this altar, listen. God is watching us and thinking, okay, are they going to get it? Are they going to get it? Are we going to get it? Yes, 
when we open this altar up, here's the deal. The altar is open. 